already have more real estate. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we try different wines. Okay. What's your favorite wine? Red or white? Hold on, first one. Red. Okay. All right. I'm, 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 I'm sophisticated. <laughs> I think a part of me was just like, y'all, we've been great. You're just now figuring it out, but we've been great. That's who we are. It's in our DNA. So like, you my uh, Colossus Deadpool, like in position. One or two moments, right? It's, it's <laughs> and I'm sitting there in my head going, <laughs> I wonder if I can somehow sniff the traffic <laughs> going from the armband. It's got to be talking to an API or something. So the next cocktail to the next conversation. Hey, what's up, C3 Squad? So on this episode, we had a little bit of a snafu, right? So as I'm starting to venture out a little bit and uh, kind of get back to some of the in-person interviews, uh, I did this interview that's coming up in person at On Location. And unfortunately, the audio wasn't as great. I'm working on that. Getting some better mics. We're getting some things together. So just wanted to let you know that you may have some audio issues, uh, but don't worry. We're going to get back to the same quality of audio that you're used to, but still a very good pod. Hope you enjoy it. We'll see you guys. Everybody, welcome back to Cocktails, Code, Conversations, or as it's affectionately known as the C3 Podcast. Um, you guys know what it is. We have another special guest, but as you know by now, because you guys know me all the time, I tell you, all of my guests on this podcast are special. This one, though, and you guys are doing the whole thing, you say they have capping again, but this one's kind of really special. It's, it's a different special because it's very rare that you get a chance to kind of link up with. Uh, one of your big brothers, mentors, and that's what we have for this episode today. So welcome to the podcast, Mr. Reggie Gibbs. Thank you, Dave. It's good to be here. Um, so appreciate you coming by. This was, this was actually perfect, man. You, you were in Atlanta for the weekend, so um, I'm glad we were able to link and make this happen. And so I, I got to start and tell us a little bit of a story, right? So um, how I met Reggie Gibbs uh, was actually, wasn't directly, it was through a mutual friend, uh, Herm. I remember I was going to know, uh, and it was, um, I actually don't even remember the actual, like, how the linked up, but it, Herm has always been this guy who was just like, yo, I want you to meet this person, I want you to meet this person. And this was during college, so I'm like 19, 20 years old, and as I'm learning this about my buddy Herm is that he just has an outstanding uh, selection of character, and I've learned later on in life that Herm says, we need to meet this brother, I'd be like, all right, man, I don't even ask some questions. So Herm was just like, you, know, you gotta be ready, you gotta be ready. Like, All right, cool. And uh, so we ended up, uh, you know, meeting you and then hanging out at the at the house back then in Durham, um, becoming an honorary part of the, the, the record label. And for me, it was um, it was really cool because it was at that point it was coming like my junior year of college, and so getting ready to graduate and just kind of go into the world. So having like you and Pat just as like um, you know images of, of black men and and what life looked like like after college um, it was awesome, man. And, and I never I always, um, I think I told you this last time, I was kind of to your surprise, like, I tell people I've always had mentors, and, and the mentors I have are never really like this formal, like, will you be my mentor? But it's just people who come into my life who I respect and who just in their lifestyle has like had an impact on me. And, and you were one of the first ones, just how you how you treated us as kids. I think about it now, I was like, this dude had a bunch of like random kids in college and he didn't know, he just kind of like, oh, it is. Well, it was never that way. You were just always like just super open with us and just like whatever we needed. And so um, that um, had a big impact like on that part of my life, just kind of coming out. And I was like, all right, this is, this is how I want to be. I want to make sure that I'm, I'm helping people, that I'm doing the best that I can. And you know, here's a guy that, you know, had whatever knowledge he had and was always willing to give it to us. So uh, it was super dope and I appreciate you for that. And we had turned into the relationship we have now. So I can always call you. We always have these dope conversations. So. That, ladies and gentlemen, is, is, is the backstory, and uh, so that's why we do that. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I've got to say, David, like, what you don't know is that when you guys started coming around and you added so much vibrancy to the record label in the studio, um, you know, character makes a difference. And it was Herm's aunt that kind of linked us all up together. So. Right. And so, uh, and so you fit right in, and as much as you think that we get, you guys gave me even more. So that is that's something to be said about relationship building and about this um, idea of sharing and it coming back to you and look to look at what we're doing. Yeah. So you know, so so don't feel like you, know, <laughs> you, guys, you guys gave as much as we did. Yeah. Um, it, it was so funny that I was talking actually earlier today. 
um, with uh, his, his name is CJ. He was uh, he was Brandon's younger cousin, and so I thought it's like the last two years. All, all the fellas, right? So all the term, uh, Mario, like we've all stayed together since college. We've all kept in contact. And all these relationships from that time. To me, it's normal because we we kept in contact and like you guys formed like the base, the motto, of like what's led me to mature as a person and all this stuff or whatever. And, and so we maintain these relationships. And I'm starting to realize how rare that is. Like people I'll talk to people like, wait, what? And I'm just like, yeah, like, same guys for 20 years. I'm like, y'all You know what they I think that a lot of people Understand is that building relationships is the key to life. It's the key, it's the key to success. And I really don't care what genre you're talking about, whether it could be business, personal, regardless. It's all about relationship. Yeah. And unless you can establish a relationship, maintain it by nourishing it, and then like look how you can be a better person so that you can give more of a relationship, you know, you feel you know, things kind of go downward. So you've got to be able to have those three things in order for sustainability. And that's exactly what you've been able to do with your relationships. And that's what I try to do with mine. I tell folks, you know, I some folks say in the building business, it's just business. Right. You know, it's not just business. Yeah. Like it's, it, it, it's this concept that really permeates through who you are as a person. And you shouldn't have to have one face in business, one face in your spiritual life. One face when you hang out, you know, it's all about being a person and being true to how it is that you build your relationships. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with the relationship building. Um, I was, I've said many times, like the biggest skill set that I've, that I would say has been my most valuable is, is that is learning how to build and cultivate relationships and create them and. You know, some of it's you know natural. Some people have different personality types, right? And some people are like you know, you put me in a room full of strangers, I'll never not have a friend. But and, and that's that's that comes different from some people. But there's also like the skill in just realizing like how to, you know, how to connect with somebody and build that relationship and learning that you know it's it's got to be a true like give and take relationship, right? I think some people get in they think about network and relationship building, and it's 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 what can I get? What can I get? What can I get? Like and it's it's it, it's not about that. It's like okay, what can I, what can we connect on? What can I help this person with, mm-hmm. right? And like, all right, like you are, you know, building a business. Like, hey, I'm really good at marketing. Like, let me let me let me help. Let me give you some ideas with it. Let me help you with that. It's, it's about what you can give, and then you start to see like that gets you certain days, right? Uh, I, I would say it's like two types of relationships. One's parasitic, <laughs> <laughs> and the other one's a symbiotic. You know what I mean? So you want to make sure that you're not a parasite and just kind of sucking up the blood of the life of the life and the rest of yourself and getting all you can. And then the other people that's in the supposed relationship starts to death. Regardless if it's once again, if it's business or it's a relationship. Right. And that's true. You know, we've been around for a while. We know a lot of relationships, personal relationships, where it's a parasitic relationship. You know, but until you can truly reach that semi-hosis, that's when you can kind of get give it and take it. Yeah. yeah. So, you much happier. Everybody, everybody wins. Everybody thrives. <laughs> you know, it keeps blood pumping. Yes, yeah. you know? and it, it, it drives like it drives everything else that you're trying to do, right? Like, if you look at like team dynamics, and um, so if you're talking about business and, and have developing those relationships on the team, like when everybody feels like you know they're giving something, they're giving something to your point that sending out a relationship, you see like just the, the energy flow between people, and it's like. As a team, you just start to realize that there's nothing you can't do. Like you, that, that kind of team confidence starts to build, and it's 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 really it's a it's an interesting thing to see. I've, I've been a part of it a couple of times at different companies, and then try to you know emulate it in my own endeavors and stuff like that because it's just um, it really starts to show you the power of like what people can do when you get linked in on a common vision and you're you're building those relationships and those relationships are fruitful, right? Um, it's 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 really amazing. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what you got going on in, in, in Durham. For um, uh, we had a chance to get down there in December for the gala. Um, it was awesome. It was a fantastic event. Had a great time. Um, had great food, even though it took forever to get. But that's okay. Uh, <laughs> so talk a little bit about what you got going down with Durham. Yeah, yeah. So um, prior to the pandemic, right before the pandemic, it came back. Right. Um, we have a space called Fuse Party. It's 
and it was um, in the space, gathering the space, um, all things entertainment as well as social, and then the pandemic hit, right? And so it was hard for those social type businesses to kind of expand. So what we did was we closed that down in Lawrenceville, and we linked up with the fruit, which was downtown Durham. This is a long story short, but the owner of the fruit was at least him. He had what I needed, and I needed what he had. <laughs> <laughs> this is about relationships, yeah. what we're just talking about. And so I took all of my sound equipment and everything down, and we were able to form this nice marriage, if you will, this partnership, and kind of expand the services of the food. The food is a art gallery, we started off as a art gallery. Now we're all things, um, we all hope for the door community in terms of the arts. So when you come over there, you might get a little bit of art on the wall within the gallery area. You might get some dance, um, a lot of um, warehouse parties. It's, it's a whole country warehouse space. Right. So a lot of warehouse parties go on. You know, concerts, live concerts, DJ sets. Um, family reunions. <laughs> so the whole, the whole concept is being local. And my company, Accenture Group, which is the umbrella uh, corporation for what we establish at the food, which is called the ATC Festival, as we were talking about before, um, we just um, partnered with Tim and his organization to expand what the food is called over there. Also, the caveat, caveat is we wanted to. Uh, Build on cultural diversity in downtown Durham. Mm -hmm. That's gentrification. Yeah. We found that a lot of people who were in Durham before could not afford to come back down Durham and they moved out of the city. So you know, we've got folks from everywhere else coming in, price points for the residential housing and breaks. And so it's important to me to make sure that we can kind of balance out the norm. And so what we also do is provide a um, program that's relevant. And um, opportunity for people who need a space, who might be people of color or people who are not in a walking out situation, an opportunity for them for what they can attend as well. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's um, look, if anyone listens, if you're ever down in, in downtown Durham, you got to check it out. It's a, it's a wonderful space. And I say that knowing that the, the, the way that I saw it, the gallery, I don't know if it's always set up the same way, but it's always different. It's always different. <laughs> You come out of here, you know, we'll, on, on one day we'll have trucks coming in the warehouse that drop my stuff for a play, and the next day is a concert. So you, you do this shit, that's whatever. But that's the beautiful thing about having yeah. 22,000 square, uh, square feet warehouse space is that you, know, you can't mess it up the see the floor, right? So right. you can really turn it into what you're really going to turn it into. Yeah, yeah um, so I, I would definitely encourage people to check it out. Um, I, I loved it, man. I loved everything about the vibe um, of how it was set up, and, and it's it's interesting because I'm, I'm starting to see, I mean, we're, we're in one similar right now as so we're in Atlanta at the gathering spot, but you're starting to see like these little social co-working, um, networking spaces, multi-use just kind of pop up where right. people can just kind of, you know, show up, you know, network um, and organically kind of have events happening, which I think is really good because it, especially considering where we are coming up the pandemic, because I think one of the things in the last couple of years that that made it hard was how do you establish a sense of community? Because we always just kind of depended on the fact that we just go hang out, right? And then all of a sudden it was like, well, no more. Yeah, right? Or or now that we're starting to start to, it's like, well, we can, but maybe some of us don't want to. Like, there's things of that nature. So, you know, you lose a sense of community, is, is where I'm going. And I, and I like what I'm seeing with, like, you know, things like the food, things like TGS down here, where you can kind of get that. Um, and it's funny because you're even seeing it with, um, uh, like, residential spaces. So, we've seen a lot of, uh, like work, live, play, work, type of play, right? Um, uh, actually, they're building one in, um, in Grisville, right across from ANC. Oh, um, yeah, that's, that's a different conversation. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a different conversation. <laughs> um, but it's, so it's, it's, I think it's very interesting this move back to that, yeah. right? Because yeah. um, again, back to that kind of sense of community and helping people kind of connect. Um, so I want to, I want to ask you a couple of questions around like um, in the life of an entrepreneur, right? You've always being kind of entrepreneur, I mean, from the time I met, like you always said, you always had a business. Where, um, where did that start for you, and, and what are some of like the principles you've learned over the years that have, that have kind of led to um, you know, your success? Which I know you won't say that, but I think I'll, I'll go ahead and say it for you. Led to your success with that. You know, I was just sitting here thinking about the conversation that we just had about relationships, and 
and looked at my parents, and it, it's, I think that a lot of it came from them. Like my mom, we didn't have a lot of money growing up, just not going to pull out those things on the parents, but we didn't know that we were poor. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know it. And, um, and my dad, I mean, he, he worked many hours during the day. He was a financial guy. You know, he, um, he kept everything going in the house. He um, also had all these other businesses in addition to his job. You know, like a tire company that he ran out of the backyard. You know, that fix folks' cars, he did folks' taxes. I mean, <laughs> he literally did everything. And then my mom, you know, she took care of things from the house. Right. Like, and um, she was the one that was the organizer. She would do community bus trips to malls and things like that, church trips. Um, it's always the one that's playing these huge gospel programs at the church. So, kind of got a little bit of everything from them. And when we talk about relationships, that's a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. Right? You know, they didn't realize what their strengths were, but they were married for over 50 some years, you know. And so, um, so a lot of that came from just watching and I just encourage everybody, you know, like, like people watch what you do more than what it is that you say. And so and I've learned that um, my dad had so you know, one of the things that he had was habitual was actions speak louder than words. Mm-hmm. Quiet and won't make a mistake. And so I think that, um, you know, like your foundation has a lot to do with how it is that you build these relationships and also how it is that you can move forward. Um, so I've always been that guy that I look to learn very other people. And here's the other thing it's finding out what your strengths are. You know, I've never been that guy that wanted to be in the spotlight. You know, <laughs> As a matter of fact, thank you, to, thank you to you for having me to do this podcast because I was just like, you want to interview me like this? <laughs> but, uh, but I will always be the one that, that my strengths are in the group of people, probably the members of Max and Max, and I've realized that a long time ago. Right. And I think that part of building a box of success is finding out who you are and what your strengths are and what it is that you're good with. Sort of with that. Too many times we spend a lot of time on those things that we don't do well, those things that we're challenged with. But there's more things, more stress that we have than more things we're challenged with. Right. We can hire someone to work on the things that we're not so good at. Yes. <laughs> so let's solve those things and find out who we are and then start pouring on the people. Everything that I've ever done has always been. If there's some level of success there, it's going to be like that. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, and I couldn't agree more. It's, um, you know, I just, I just recently took on, took on a new position. I had to inherit a team at work. And, you know, one of the things that uh, my buddy would ask is, what are you most excited about? And I was like, I'm excited to get back to, like, having a team again. Right? Because um, it's been about three, like, two or three years since I, um, didn't have like any direct reports. And it was nice because I was like, there, there's a, you know, burden's not the right word, but the administrative task that comes with it and make sure all this stuff or whatever. Yeah. And it was nice to just kind of get to focus and get back to work. But um, that, the, the, the digging in and building with somebody and saying, okay, like, where does it did you want to go? Right? And, and saying, okay, the way I look at it is like, you tell me your career path. And that becomes my job is to go, okay, what, what can I do to put as many resources again in place to help you get there? And then there's, there's areas that you want to grow. There's areas where you maybe you have some challenges. Okay, so how do I get you work that you can build up some of those you know, strengths a little bit or the shorts and things, things like that? And it's just, um, to me, it, it's funny because when I'm back from being an engineer, I tell people, I was like, it's just people engineering all over again. So now it's like you get into it and go, okay, what's the best way that I can get them to, to number one, be them themselves, not that I see, but that they see in your world. Yes, like, yeah. this is the, I'm the best person I can be in this type of whatever. So, um, and it, it's, it's, it's all about like people and, and, and doing that. And I just, um, it took me about, probably about 10 years to learn that working in career is like, if I started to focus on like people and like what my team was doing or even the bosses that I had, like what drives them, like everything else just kind of flowed back. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and it just makes things so much easier. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I remember when I met you, 
I've had we had Trio Life Entertainment like your studios and um, you know in the grand scheme of things financially that business was really successful. Right. But however, the success was we learned so much about building relationships. And and for success, I tell folks don't always measure your success depending on how much money you're making. Right. Because it's those other tangible things like you younger that's gonna unearth the things that you're going to move forward. And so for, for me, for us, it was an opportunity. Um, even though I did lose a lot of money with that venture, it was an opportunity for a recipe for how the rest of my life would be shaped. Because I, we took that formula of investing and building with other people. Because remember, our number one artist was just Patrick. Yep. Uh, so we took that formula of building with other people and learn from it, and then had other businesses to come on board. For instance, you know, we had a, a leader invested in a personal training studio, you know, and um, there was, when I moved to Durham, up Durham, it was a great personal trainer that I had, but he was young, he just needed an opportunity. So what we did was we invested in him, got a building, built the space up, and in three years, four years, turned it over to him. So that, that almost all of my businesses have been just like that. Right. Right? As an Esquire, the suit company, you know, he, uh, he was in Canada doing on market share within the United States, so he helped to build a company in the United States, and now he's, he's all over. Um, so, so you name it, um, even with clients with Inform Media, my, my cousin, my other clients, right. um, we helped them in their particular business to build it up. So it's all about that experience, even though we look at it as a financial failure in the beginning, it was definitely. The catalyst for what I wanted to do is how I built my businesses my formula yeah. and synergy. And then you know what? There's a there's a really big key principle in that, right? Is is you know most people when they look into entrepreneurship, they go read the books, they read the articles, all the stuff, or whatever. And you always gravitate towards the like, oh, the success they did this and then and they went off and sold it and all of this stuff or whatever. But they don't pay attention to like the foundation of what's behind it. Like you're, I would. Be willing to bet eighty percent of your successful entrepreneurs have what people would call failed businesses, right? But when you talk to them, they will tell you it was those businesses that gave them what they needed to make the other ones successful. Because it's in those that you learn like how to team build, and, and honestly, sometimes just what not to do. Right? Like, yeah. Okay, like you find out I'm bad at sales. Okay, next time, <laughs> make sure I hire a salesperson, right? Or well, whatever it is, but it, but it, it's it's. I just I hear it so many times. I, I interviewed um, you know Mark McLean a couple of weeks ago. He was a CEO of Cellphone, a public traded company now, right? And we were just talking about like, the process and how it started, and um, you know some of the conversations I've had with him uh, that we didn't have on camera. Were just like the the fails of the like false starts and, and what, what they learned from that. And so then going into it, they're like, okay, now we know what to go put in place, and now we know how to do this, which is why. The second or third business or whatever venture is like seems to have quote unquote immediate success because it's like yeah because you didn't see the and, and, and that's and that's why people don't see it. right they they, they they see you know everything that you see in the media or the way things public but they don't see all the hard work that you put in and all the money that you have lost with all the failures and and I, I tell folks all the time don't be afraid to talk about the failures right don't be afraid. it's those things that if you're really with people, it's those things that are really challenging and to give you out of your stomach. Those are the things that other people will learn from. They're not going to learn as much from, you know, what you see glamorously, you know, on TV or what you know, the beautiful websites that you have. And right. The books. <laughs> no, let's talk, let's talk, let's, let's, let's real talk. Here. Right. <laughs> let's, let's talk about those things. Um, and they're important. I guarantee you, like you said, every millionaire, every person who've had some level of success. Service. Yeah, and, and it's and, and I wish and, and part of you know what we want to do like you know with this podcast and more than media we're doing across our platform is you get into those parts that whatever the unsexy the unknown parts or whatever because one that's where you get the most you'll learn the most so two you need to get for anybody that's aspiring you, you want to get the real and realize that like all this comes with it so don't get into something and start a business and be like okay well. Yeah, I'm gonna get million in 12 months. I'm gonna make this much and this much, and then it doesn't happen, so then you quit. It's like, okay, well, you might have to go through losses in the beginning to figure out like what your process is. 
right? To figure out what your go to market plan is, to figure out who your are like all these things you can read and you can plan all you want to, but you don't know it until you start actually doing the business. And so sometimes it means taking two or three or four steps back, and then all of a sudden you get the lead. But if you wouldn't take those steps, like you would never know what adjustments to make for you to get there. Exactly. It's, it's life is about, it's just a process, you know. And I remember, I'll tell you this real quickly. I bought my first house when I was 24, I was in grade 12, and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I just knew, I just knew that I got hit with a big tax burden when I was 24. I wasn't married, I didn't have any kids or anything. I had to pay. And so I had a friend that was in real estate, and I went to a house, I, I, he went to the neighborhood, I was just like, give me down. <laughs> and I got up, I didn't know what I was doing. But but I remember I had this old guy that came over and cleaned my carpet, cleaned my carpet into the house, and I was telling him, I can't wait to get this house, and this is what I want to do next. And then at age 30, I want to have this. And she, he looked at me and said, really smart guy, but just stop and smell the roses for a little while. And I never really kind of, I didn't get it where I am, but then after I slept on it, I think what he was really trying to tell me is that life, life has a lot of twists and turns in it, and there's beauty in the things that we don't frame ourselves. Right. So, you know, instead of like the straightest um, or the quickest way to a, to a, to a given destination in a straight, straight, a straight line, look at all these crooks and crevices. These, these points in between are where you're going to find your greatest advantages, how you can help people, how you can self maximize. And so that was one of the first left. I don't know who that guy was, I think I wish I could thank him, but in addition to my parents, but that was one of my guiding principles that helped me start giving more. And then mm -hmm. also learning from each experience that I had. So I like to tell everybody don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to try. Because if you cannot get the second base without keeping keeping your foot from playing on first, you gotta take that leap at some point in time. It's okay. You know, you're gonna get dusted, you're gonna get dirty. <laughs> that's the beauty of it, yeah, you know? And then learn from that experience, dust yourself off, and keep on playing. That's how we do it. Yeah. And then, you know what? As you were saying that, right, um, what, what hit me was. What's so important, and, I, and I'll, I'll try not to write too much about it, but I might a little bit, right? It's because we we constantly put into either from like the education system um, and sometimes in like underprivileged communities to where it's like all this pressure where it's like, don't fail, right? Like, so, you know, you, you can't, you know, you only get one shot, you get this, this, that, whatever. And so what it becomes is like we create this pressure bubble of, People afraid to go try because they, they don't want to fail. They don't want to like I gotta go find like, the safest path. And I'm like, that's the biggest you know injustice we can do because it's like you gotta the, these quote unquote unsafe paths are where you find the greatest gains, right? And not even from a financial perspective, but sometimes just from a, a personal perspective. Like it'll take you through something that you'll get to a spot and be like, wow, you'll grow spiritually, you'll grow like mentally. Like you'll find yourself in places where you're just like. Had I never reached out and tried, I never would have passed here. And that's one thing that I, that I really want to make sure that we give back to, you know, our community, just people. It's like that, that spirit of like just that same kind of look out in the world we have in three or four. We don't know anybody, right? We just let's go, right? Like, I was like, don't ever lose that. Like, keep that, right? Don't let everything else that you learn and, and, and the math and the but maturity gets you to the point where you still don't have that child like just I'm gonna try this why not yeah. right because yeah. I mean that that's like I said that's what leads to the, the biggest gains in life. And I, I would say the other thing that I've done with my personal businesses is everyone that I've invested in I had to make a promise that whatever they learn they would turn around and reinvest in somebody else and so that's the most important thing I'm only one day. Right. If someone else can learn these principles that we're talking, talking about and apply them, um, if you help a couple, three or four people, then you do an exponent of that. That's a whole lot more people that you can help by just doing it yourself. Exactly. So, and that's what all of these people are doing who are under the Consenergy Group umbrella. Um, they're turning around after they start you know, maximizing their business. And even while, because you don't have to wait to the end. 
Right, right. right. That's, <laughs> old, that's an old gospel song about don't wait till the battle is over, shout now, you don't know. <laughs> But, but right now, in this very moment, is um, if you have learned something, it's I admonish you to share it right. because you're in the now, you're in the present, and that and, and, and that can help somebody and move them forward. You don't have to wait till you get the world or you get the right. experience, whatever. Shout out, yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> and, and and it's and I think for some people, if they, if they hear this, and they'll be like, yeah, okay, it's for you to say, but. It's sweeter if you do it now, because trust me, when you when you get the thing that you think that you want so bad, like it's you get there and you're just like, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because like, what's gonna happen? Like it, it's 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 the it's the um, the more monster, right? You're, you're like, okay, well this is cool, but now I want more. I got a hundred thousand, now I want two hundred thousand. I got this. Whatever it is, there's gonna be that monster that comes in and holds more. So like. Where you're at now, like just celebrate that, enjoy that because it's that's you're gonna realize later, like man, it was sweet back then, like, I really didn't have any going to that, that first customer that you get, right? Like, like, Almost like, that feeling with that first yeah, customer. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, just you know, like I want people to try. Yeah, they just just try. You know, just get if it's something that you really want to do, put one foot in front of the other, try. You fail, huh, okay. Pick it up. Within that failure, there's a success because you learned something. Right. right. And then move on to the next level. Share your experience in the present, right now. Let somebody else know what it is you did. Don't keep it all balled up. If you keep it all balled up, then you're going to you know, talk, start talking about mental health issues and everything else that's going on. You can't right. do that stuff yourself. Share your success and share your failures and move on to the next level. Move on. And, uh, and 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 use all of your experiences to unveil who you are. So I just want people to know to put one foot in front of the other. Try, you know, if you fail, realize your successes. Share it with somebody. That's right. Repeat, you know, the key of it. No. All right. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk to you about what's next for the business, because we always only got something planned out. And uh, of course, we'll dig into the famous segment last set. We'll be back in a second. Hey, what's up, C3 Squad? Wanted to let you know about our brand new platform that we are so excited about. It is ebonyascent.com. This is now the new home of the C3 podcast, as well as some mental health podcasts, a money blog. Look, we're going to be having so much great content on here that we just can't wait for you to go and check it out for yourself. So if you've been a longtime subscriber to the C3 Squad and the C3 podcast, why don't you go ahead, go ahead, head over to ebonyascent.com, www.ebonyascent.com, and check out the new content. Go ahead, subscribe up as a member. It's completely free. Uh, we can't so, wait for you to check it out. So go ahead and do that. But for now, let's get back to the pod. Well, the Synergy Group is the umbrella organization of all the businesses that I share that, that, I, that I have. Um, and the way that the Synergy got working, it actually really started back in the day. I was mean, <laughs> working with you and all the other folks, and I found out, I was like, my gift and my talent is to bring these folks together. Right. And so uh, we established this concept called Synergy. That's a whole different story. But, um, within the umbrella, we have um, a real estate investment group. Have a um, concierge business for suits, for making suits and men's apparel. Um, there is the ATC Festivals, which is the art, thought, and cultural festivals where we do the fruit, and um, a couple of other businesses that are emerging. So, what we're going to do is we're going to build on what we already have. We're not going to change the model. Um, we're going to keep going that umbrella. One of the things, the public things, are a lot of energy is in the art, thought, and cultural festivals. And Two major events per year. One is during June 10th, this is a national holiday. That's so, right. It's, it's always a national holiday. Yeah, and it's all for it's all the rest of us just coming out of it. It's caught on. So, uh, we do a huge event around that in Durham at the Fruit. And then um, our biggest event is the Consumer Gala, which is in December every year. Last year, we called it the um, the artist ball, right. um, but we just that concept where it's almost like a Met Gala where people dress up in all like these free food type outfits and everything. And, you know, you come and you celebrate um, the very artistic. So we're going to build on those, on those two things and just bring people together um, okay. so that they can better network and establish an entity within the downtown and the dark community. 
So, so what I hear from that is I needed a dean now to start working on my outfit for pretty much the gallery show. I got you. Okay. Okay. It's actually got lots of hair. So and so for those events, you know, you can go to concentrity.com, c o n c e n e r g y.com, or atcfestivals.com, um, ATC festivals on social media as well, and find out what's going on. Okay, there you go. You yeah, heard it. We can't wait. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, dope, man. I can't wait to see more of the festivals. Um, so at, at minimum, of course, we'll be back for the gala. Um, We'll see if we can develop the team. Yeah, that, yeah, that would be great. Um, you know, so for, for the gala this year, we're doing it a little bit different. Um, last year, last year, we just had a artist ball, but for this year, we're doing um, a new artist showcase as well um, a vendor holiday market. We're also doing a hair exhibition, hair show and competition, oh, and <laughs> and also a. Um, it's something else that escapes you, but it's a bunch of stuff that's combined in one. So when you go to a hair show, most people just go to a hair show. Right. Really? Like, can you imagine, oh, fashion, fashion exhibition as well, fashion show. So can you imagine a hair show, fashion show, new artist showcase, all of this wrapped up within that that ball that you saw last year when you came? It's going to be something that nobody has ever kind of found out. That's the second Saturday in December. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Mark out the calendar now. Yeah. You ready? It's going to be a great event. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. And then for Juneteenth, um, I always like to do something a little bit different. So this year, we're having a second annual golf tournament um, during North Carolina. Yeah. Golf. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and additionally, after you know the players play around with golf, um, we're doing um, a Afrofuturism uh, theme digital art show within the fruit, and then we have a panel conversation, um, you know, during the evening, and then we've got to have a, a culminating ceremony, right? So we've got all of the divine nine that's coming together. <laughs> They're going to be wearing their letters, and we're going to have a big warehouse party to celebrate Juneteenth. So it's going to be a wonderful opportunity to show, show solidarity, right? Yeah, um, around that particular holiday. Okay, man. Yeah. So big things coming this year. All right, yeah. keep it moving. <clears throat> Can't wait to see you. Um, so we're going to switch to our, our our final segment, right? This is this is the world famous segment. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting you prepared for this. Okay? Be nervous. It's, it's okay. You don't have to be nervous. Um, but <clears throat> this this is the international podcast. We do have you know listeners in Australia, uh, India, and I'm trying to think Canada. Shout out to Canada. We see. You. Um, no, world famous segment, it is called The Last Sip. Now, normally, we have cocktails, we all know it's a C3 podcast, look people, I'm working on it. Things didn't work out the way we wanted to this time. Uh, apparently, we're almost closed today, and then I know that at this location, so <laughs> y'all can just imagine that y'all have a cocktail with y'all. Uh, we call this segment The Last Sip, and, and I end the, the pod the same way, the same question I ask everybody is, what do you want your legacy to be? Uh, very good question. <laughs> You try to throw me with that, right? But <laughs> this, this is something I think of often. And like, what am I going to leave behind? And so, this is the company and my life's work that I've been trying to build for so long with Concentric.com. All of these people that we've supported throughout the years, I want them to take those principles of life, take those principles of business take those principles of how to care and show respect for other people and keep moving those along the line for future generations. And so these are seeds that I've instilled. I really don't care if I get any acknowledgement of it at all. It's about the better of society and moving the people forward. So if anything, and like these are the these are the things that my dad left me and these are the things that my mom left me. Right. I want to share with the world. So it's those things that we've talked about. Hey, take this tidbit of information that I have learned throughout my life and please share it with other people. Hopefully that'll be no legacy. Right. I feel like there should be a book in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. Hey, there might be some other works. Just like, no, no. 
Okay, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. We're going to make sure you get the book. I appreciate it. Rez, man, thanks for coming and hanging out, being on the pod. Hey, no, thank you for the invitation. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, I just, I never thought that I'd be sitting down with you on the podcast, but, you know, this has helped me kind of reify and kind of reframe as well. And thank you for sharing this opportunity with me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, back to the twists and turns, life, life takes you in interesting ways. I, if you would have told me back when I was in college, I, I own a media company, so I'd be doing how I'm like it, right? But, uh, you know, you go, you, you go where things take you. So, all right, everybody, y'all know what it is. The next cocktails, the next conversation. I'll stay safe out there.